as one, if not the premier 3D software used worldwide for creating architectural visualizations. 3ds Max offers a very comprehensive selection of easy to make objects that can be used in any architectural project. Doors, windows, stairways, the program's got them all. Let's take a look at some of the options. Before we get going though, why don't we first switch into a more accurate way of measurement? We'll go from using Max's generic units to let's say measuring in feet and fractional inches. To do that, we'll head up to the Customize pull-down menu and choose Unit Setup. In the dialog about halfway down, we'll set things to US Standard, leaving its value set to feet and fractional inches. OK, let's start with the walls. Anytime you need to quickly add a wall to a scene, whether it be to the inside or to the outside of the structure, you can go to the Crate menu, click on Standard Primitives, and head into a section called AEC Extended. AEC standing for Architectural, Engineering, and Construction. Clicking on Wall, you have initial settings for both the height and thickness of what you'll create. Let's leave the settings as they are, using a thickness of 5 inches and a wall height of 8 feet. Activating the top view, let's now make a few walls. When you're done, you can right click to end the command. OK, to get everything centered in all four views, let's now use the Zoom Extents All shortcut. That's Shift Control Z on your keyboard. Heading to the Modify column, you can change both the length and angle of a wall by working down at the sub-object level. We'll open up the wall entry, heading down to the vertex level. In the top view, let's now window select the vertex that makes up the end of our shorter wall. With that now selected, we can move the vertex to both lengthen, shorten, or angle the wall. You can also easily alter the layout of the wall by adding additional insertion points. Using the Refine command, we can add a vertex directly in line with the existing wall. That enabling us to then select that new point, moving it to where we'd like that new wall portion to be repositioned. Insert also adds a new insertion point. But with it, when you click, you actually hold onto the existing wall, re-angling it as you move your mouse. You can also connect walls together, either exterior walls or interior ones. Clicking on the Connect command, I'll simply connect two outside vertices. Doing so instead on any two interior vertices will connect those together also. So that's what's up with the walls. Pretty straightforward. Let's get out of vertex mode. We'll delete what we've made, then use the Zoom Extents All command. Again, that's Shift Control Z. You also have a couple of different options for creating doors. Now there's a separate category for those. Heading back to the Crate menu, we'll click on AEC Extended. In the list, just a little farther down than halfway, we'll click on Doors. Let's take our perspective view full screen by hitting Alt-W, and we'll create a pivot door. Once we have it in place, we'll orbit and pan around to get a better view. OK, let's then go to the Modify column. At the top of the Parameter section, we have controls for the height, the width, and the depth of the door, the depth controlling how deep the frame is. Directly below those three settings, you'll see an option called Open. You can use this to actually open the door. Let's try that. You'll also notice an option to create double doors. Let's check that. Flip Swing can be used to change the doors from pushing in to pulling out. Turning off the Double Doors option, we can also flip the hinge, so the door would open not from the left-hand side, but from the right. A little further down, in the Leaf parameters, we can control the number of panels on the door. Let's change both the horizontal and vertical number to 2. Those panels can either be either glass or beveled. You can make that change just a little farther down.
Let's go ahead and delete our pivot door and we'll make a sliding door. Now with the slider, you again have an option to open what you've created. You can also use the flip side command to make the door open to the right as opposed to opening to the left. And just like with the pivot, you've got your standard height, width, and depth options. Let's delete that one and we'll try a bifold door. And once we have that on the screen, let's go ahead and open up what we've made. You can also change things over to using a double door configuration. Let's activate that. So here we have something that you'd maybe see in, let's say, setting up a closet. Changing the flip swing option, the doors, instead of pulling in, will push out. Let's go ahead and delete that. Now, when needing a window or two, you've got a couple of options there also. Windows, like doors, are kept in their own separate category. Let's go back to Create and see what we can find. OK, let's start with creating a casement window. Now, the casement is pretty straightforward. The two big things to know, in addition to being able to set its dimensions, are its ability to open and the fact that it can swing from the opposite side. Let's go ahead and delete that and we'll create a sliding window. With the sliding, it too can be open and closed in addition to changing its configuration as to where it hangs, going from side to side to up and down. There's also one called awning. Let's take a look at that. This window configuration is basically designed to go up and down. As a way of customizing, you can change the number of panels. In the Rails and Panels category, let's change the panel count to 2 and we'll open and close it again. Let's see how a 3 panel setup would look. So whatever you need, Max has got the option for the task at hand. 3ds Max also offers a few options as far as building stairs. Let's delete our window, we'll go back to the Crate column, heading this time into the Stairs category. Why don't we also reset the layout of our view by typing Z. OK, let's start with the Straight Stairs. Once created, let's head over to the Modify column and see what adjustments we can make. In the Layout category, we've got controls for both the length and the width of the staircase. We've also got control on the overall height of the staircase, top to bottom. That's going to be your rise. You can also control within that area the number of steps. In addition to the thickness of those steps. You can add stringers, that would be under the Generate Geometry category. And above that, under Type, you can either close them up or build a box underneath. Let's go ahead and delete those and we'll try the L-Type stairway. Once created, you can change both the angle of the steps and what is called the offset, which is the length of the landing between the two sets of steps. Like with many of the other types, you can also put a box underneath what you've built. That setting would be a little bit higher up under Type. Let's go ahead and delete that and we'll try one more stairway type, this time the Spiral Staircase. The height of the staircase can be changed in the Rise section. If wanting, you can even throw a pole into the middle. Under Generate Geometry, you'd simply want to check on Center Pole. 
That center post size can be controlled a little farther down in a section called Center Pole. We'll open that up, then under Parameters, we'll change the radius. You can also add handrails, either inside or outside. Let's put an outside one on. Back at the top, under Generate Geometry, in the Handrail section, we'll check Outside. We can also close up the stairway at the bottom or fill it down to the floor. If wanting to make the middle pole go higher, back under center pole, we'd simply adjust the height. So there's all kinds of different configurations that you can set up. Now, in our second video on creating architectural objects, we'll look at making foliage.